What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode from Mr. Gray's Talk Room. I'm your host, Christian Gray. Today, I'm going to give you dirty talk secrets. Now, if you've been following me since I started my podcast, you would know that I'm trying to build this incremental step to helping you adopt a soft core BDSM lifestyle. And I follow the mantra that if you're having problems outside of the bedroom, you're going to be having problems inside of the bedroom and vice versa. So you know the tips to not bust quick, things that you have to do to be able to take care of yourself so you can take care of your woman or your partner, whatever you're into, it doesn't doesn't matter. But with that being said, the whole point of any kind of BDSM lifestyle is there's going to be trust because essentially what you're doing is you're exploiting someone's sensuality, not in a bad way per se, but you're exploiting somebody's sensuality to put boundaries that they've probably never been pushed before. So if you look back like in elementary school, your boundaries were pushed trying to study for a test or the state exam or some shit like that. You have to put it in that same aspect that I'm pushing somebody's boundaries that they don't have all the answers to, but I'm guiding them to get to them where I want to be as a dominant. And your submissive will get there. Now, one of the biggest problems with that as as vanilla couples start to get into the BDSM realm is they want to make it look like a like a porn scene. The problem with that is a porn scene is actually acted out like they have a script they go through shit they, they're pretty much the same way that you view hollywood a-list actors that's the way you have to look at porn the only difference is that again if, if we're talking about you know anal sex or anything like that you actually have to prep a woman to be able to do an anal scene so how this all ties in together is we know how to do some basic handcuff knots, the zip snare knot, we know the blindfold, how to introduce it, just very soft, coarse, sublime things to do. But the way it all comes down to is your rhetoric. The way I've introduced BDSM to any of my partners, any of my submissives, any per any one girl who's been like, let me try that that Fifty Shades of Grey shit. And I actually have Fifty Shades Darker here with me. Um, I had to reread the second book because there was a lot of details that because it's been years since i read this i read this i think in uh 20 2014 no fall 2014 spring 2015 um yeah so it's been like like damn near eight 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 years since i've uh, came across the book and there are some details because I think on one of the uh, streaming channels they had all the Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy and as always whenever the Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy I always like to watch the movie just to kind of remind myself um, what it looks like in the media in Hollywood versus what it really looks like in real life. Now this is not to say that you can't get into the extreme exhibition part of your relationship if you feel that you are going to need that but uh, the, the best way to actually introduce BDSM is do more of the soft core Skinamax type of stuff. So I'm, I'm, I've been rereading Fifty Shades Darker because it has a lot of key details that you haven't seen in the first and the second book. And I find that very important because you're going to want to tune in with how I'm going to teach you how to dirty talk. Because it all goes back to erotica romance. So... Before we get started, just want to make sure that if you haven't followed me on Rumble, make sure you follow me on Rumble on Mr. Grace Talk Room. I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, um, TikTok. It's on Mr. Grace Talk Room, Mr. Grace Chronicles. I'll have all the links down in the description. All the affiliate links that you see on any of my channels, just know that because my content is most likely to be demonetized on all mainstream platforms besides Rumble, I have that there. So if you find that you want to help support my referral code on Bluetooth, 
if you want to uh, support my referral code for Manscaped or if you want to support any of the stuff that I buy on Amazon like the laptop, the computer, the, the mouse, this, all that. All that is little things that you could do to help support my channel because I already know that half of the stuff that I say is probably going to be demonetized because against community guidelines. Just like, you know, last month I got demonetized for making a reaction video over an Andrew Tate video that has like thousands of views all i did was react in agreement that i would do what andrew tate did but i was also being facetious about it so again just make sure you follow me and if you're new to my youtube channel i'm using my old youtube channel that used to be gray house consulting so i'm pretty much just uploading whatever i did in the original mr grace talk room and uploading it into um mr grace talk room the new one, the second one, which is my original channel, Grey House Consulting. So if you find a lot of my old stuff that I did, like the career consulting, the resume writing, the mental health stuff, um, just know that it I pretty much did like a whatever podcast. And, you know, instead of doing street interviews, they ended up doing an actual podcast. I'm going to end up be doing just revamping my original uh, YouTube channel. So go ahead, follow, like, subscribe, support it. Uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So the question on how to dirty talk really really boil down to two particular aspects. If you're trying to dirty talk your woman and it goes back to the core concept of foreplay, the art of seduction. The art of seduction in of itself and I'm I'm again if you're a guy and you're into guys, if you're a girl, you're into girls and you're trying to seduce your partner, let me put it that way, I don't care. It doesn't make a difference. You like whatever you like. But the art of seduction is the anticipation of an action. So when you lead somebody on, kind of like when you friend zone somebody, the guy who's been friend zoned for like 10 years and he's been with his best girlfriend and she's gone through four, five, six guys. He's heard all the bullshit, heard all the like bedroom problems and all that shit. In a way, this man is seducing himself over something that is like 99.9% .9 that will never happen, right? And if you're a guy and you've been friend zoned, I assure you, you can leave your girlfriends. I personally have no girlfriends. And if you're a woman who's been with me sexually in the past, you know I am not hitting you up every day. I probably have never called you in the past year. I'm probably not texting you. If anything, if we have any sort of communication, if you've been one of my sexual partners in the past, I have not called you. I have not texted you. I have not emailed you. Maybe I commented on your story just because it was funny or it just got my attention, but I'm not having full-blown conversations with any of the partners that I've had within the past year or whatever. Like, if I cannot have any girlfriend, any girl that was my friend, who was my best friend, but also my sexual partner, also my submissive, after that tie severed, I'm done. Even now to this day, girls that maybe I went past the physical barrier, kiss them, whatever, so they know there's that sexual tension, but I never committed the act of sex or intercourse, they know I am not texting them every day, I am not calling them every day. The people that I call are my homeboys. My homeboys know that I will call them at least once a month or we'll text or we're in a group chat or something like that. I will call the people close to me. If they're, not, if they're family or friends, I will call them and they're close family or friends. I will call them, ask them, up, hey, what's going on? Cool, wanna link up? Sure, cool. But I have no girlfriends because I find it's very difficult to have a girlfriend, a girl who's just a friend, to be able to give him advice. I will tell you this. My best girl friend, who's my home girl, is probably my sister. My sister is probably my girlfriend, my girl who's a friend, who's my sister, who's my sibling because... She will tell me exactly what's up. If I bring a girl home to her, she will tell me exactly what I can anticipate with this girl. And I <clears throat> have to pay a lot of respect to my sibling because we actually have a very mutual, good relationship that most siblings don't have. So if you're going to ask me, do I have girlfriends? Absolutely fucking not. So 
how this all ties back in into the art of seduction because we're talking about you know the guy who's anticipating his girlfriend who he's friend zone but he's just waiting for his one time to be able to smash you're seducing yourself because you're hearing what he did girl may be saying oh he did me doggy style he did me missionary he put the you know angles over my head whatever he's seducing himself because it, the anticipation the words that this woman is telling this guy it's imagery it's metaphors it's similes the, the core english literature if you look at all the stuff that we probably don't even remember from like sixth grade english and i was in remedial english so i know the anticipation of an action about to happen is how you end up seducing yourself. It's how you get aroused. It's how you get like, oh, maybe I can do this. So that, so if you want to be able to take this one extreme core nugget, this core concept, it's the art of anticipation. But you have to be able to describe it with your words. That's why I personally have never been a very good texter because the tone is not as what I would imagine it to be. Some people are very good, you know, sexters. I'm not a very good sexter. I can call somebody, I can call a girl that I've been with and be able to seduce her over the phone because she can hear my tone. And I'm more of a tonal person. That's just one key aspect that I have. So, what we need to realize is, and we're going to use Fifty Shades of Grey Darker as a bit of a, a way to help you build your dirty talk. But now that you know that it's the art of anticipation of an action, seduction in of itself, and we need to be able to implement imagery, metaphors, similes, where, where it stems from here is when it comes to dirty talk itself, right? Core concept and then two two sub aspects or two sub concepts you're either going to narrate to your partner or you're going to direct your partner when it comes to dirty talk so what you tell your partner you're either narrating what's going to happen or you're directing what will happen that's and, and i know it sounds very abstract right now but i will be able to condense this in a minute so just bear with me so before we get into that I want to be able to introduce belts. So if you look at the original Fifty Shades of Grey uh, book or in the movie, uh, when, Miss, uh, when Christian Grey decides to take Anastasia Steele to the playroom, pretty much she walks into this playroom and there's floggers, there's chains, there's whips, there's leg spreaders, there's wall balls. Uh, wall balls are magnetic balls that go into a woman's vagina. And whenever she walks or she coughs, uh, it vibrates so her movement and I've used these before I've used wall balls on uh, one of my submissives in the past uh, we went out to a dinner I think at Clear Fork and let's just say she was wet the entire type the entire dinner because she's trying to speak to me and I asked her to remove her panties she's trying to speak to me and the wall balls are just stimulating her g-spot and her clitoris and her cervix and her vagina and she's just getting very aroused so that kind of set the tone for that night so again um going back to the playroom is anastasia Steele, total virgin english literature 4.0 good student uh, never been promiscuous or anything like that she comes in and she sees like floggers whipping canes rope masking tape um zip ties um, I've never been more of a zip tie person. I've been more of a rope because it's much safer in my opinion. Um, I have used handcuffs in the past. I have used bed straps in the past. I've uh, used um, uh, shibari, which is that concept of using chest and waist harness. And I'll bring you more into that. But for the typical person who they're trying to think off the top of their head, somebody who's trying to get into BDSM as a dominant, or I'll say like a vanilla dominant, right? You're introducing yourself. You can actually use belts. I mean, a flogger is one thing. You have to know the intensity based on the fabric of, of your flogger to be able to use that on your partner, your submissive. But the easiest way to start introducing, I would say, soft core punishment or idealized punishment as foreplay is actually your belt. And I remember I went through... Um, quite a phase trying to find a particular belt they're the belts that i wear my dress belts um 
but I would never use that. Like I would never like unless my submissive have explicitly asked me after I had already warmed her up on, hey, this is this will hurt a little bit more than others. But then you have to know how to use the belt. Um, I've always started on soft fabric. So if you're trying to develop punishment with your submissive, right? Right here, I have actually uh, one of. I laugh just thinking about this uh, as a lot of memories. So um, because I never wanted to ever hurt my submissive when I started BDSM, um, I got the softest fabric I possibly could have. Now this is a, a shit, I can't even remember what type of belt is, but it's one of those belts that I got with Abercrombie shorts uh, way back like in like 2015 and I still have it to this day. It, it's yeah so this is a um cotton fabric belt and this particular one has a, a leather tip end whenever it comes to belts and it applies to any kind of actual leather belt if you want to use a leather belt um how much uh slack you give your belt is gonna be less detrimental or less hurtful to your partner and Again, your partner needs to be able to exercise her right to say yellow or pineapples or say red, which is apples, safe words saying, hey, you're pushing my limit, right? Because it, it, when, when, when a submissive is pushing her limit, it doesn't have to stop automatically. You just acknowledge, okay, I understand. You acknowledge and understand. So let me put it this way. So if I were to... And guys, if you're listening to my podcast, make sure you look at the video podcast or tune into YouTube and Rumble so I can show you how to appropriately use a belt. Um, because once you see it, it's going to make more sense. So if I have my belt here and I put my partner at the edge of a bed, her hands are at the edge of the bed. Uh, she may be blindfolded. She may be not. She's bending over. She may be in lingerie. She may be not. And I pull out my belt. And I generally start with a soft fabric belt because I never want to hurt my partner or a person or my uh, submissive who's never been a submissive before. She's never tested her sensuality before. I never want to do something very extreme. If I have, let's say, one inch on this belt and I slap her ass, it's not going to really hurt, right? Even the leather tip, it won't hurt. But the more slack that I have right now, I probably have about you know, a foot of this fabric belt, if I slap it, that's going to be a little bit more painful. Now, I wouldn't say painful. It's going to be a little bit more stimulating than if I just had, you know, three inches of a fabric belt slapping her, right? So depending on how much infliction, how much stimulation you want to give her, the less fabric you hold, to, to uh, spank your partner or, or, or uh, belt your partner, it's going to hurt less. The more fabric you hold, and depending on the fabric itself, that's going to be more stimulation, more infliction. Um, you get the idea. So I've always said if you want to find the type of belts, buy a variety of belts, the soft fabric. Um, I actually have another, um, I have another fabric here. Uh, this belt is actually a pure suede belt um so it it doesn't really hurt versus like a leather leather belt like a real uh, like if you're trying to use a croc skin or a genuine leather belt it doesn't hurt so let me go ahead and take this out so uh this suede belt and i think i got this at old navy yeah so i got this suede belt at old navy um if you're looking at the video podcast right now, I probably have an inch. If I try to smack my partner with that, it's not going to hurt that much. If I hold more slack and then actually whip her, and depending on the force that I'm hitting her, it's gonna it's gonna stimulate any more. But again, that's why you test your partner's limit. You don't you don't try to pull some, uh, you know, Pornhub shit. Um, this actually doesn't really hurt, even if I hold the, even if I hold. The entire belt, as if someone was going to whip me, it really doesn't hurt. Um, depending on my partner's uh, pain threshold, it, it's just 
the fabric itself, it's, it's not hard enough to actually hurt my partner unless she wants me to, um, if she decides that she feels in the moment to be a little masochistic and I have to be more of a sadist, then I will choose to do so depending on her limitations. But again, um, using soft fabric belts, just like suede or cotton is less hurtful than using your palm. I assure you that. So just keep that in mind uh, when you start playing with belts. Again, go to Marshalls, go to TJ Maxx, um, go to any department store, uh, or you could even go to Target. Just play around, buy a few variety of belts. If you're trying to inflict some role play of punishment um, for your partner or your submissive, go ahead and just buy like three different types of fabric belts and you know one hard leather one that you're going to use specifically for playtime, right? Uh, just so at least that way you can experiment with your partner because I, the reason why I said don't use a leather belt the first time unless they specifically ask for it or unless they built a comfort level with you. Um, you don't want to scare your partner um, or you know inflicting any kind of marks. Definitely not the first time. Second time, you know, third time. Once you get comfortable, you want to be able to have that option. But definitely play around with different fabrics before you get into like canes and floggers and um, hard leather belts and whatnot. I mean, I, I know some. Uh, dominance they use uh, like uh, like wireless controllers like the like wired controllers uh, the uh, I can't explain it but like you know actual rubber type of material and uh, you know I, I think before I even continue with the dirty talk I, I need people to understand is um, all sadists are dominants, not all dominants are sadists. All masochists are submissives, not all submissives are masochists. You know, if you want to inflict pain or if you enjoy uh, pain being inflicted on, uh, that's to each your own. And there's actually archetypes when it comes to BDSM, like cuckolds and caretakers, sadists, masochists, uh, but dominant submissive is kind of like the core concept of it all. Um, there are people who even switch roles. So like a, a switch role would be dominant submissive, but then you have the woman who's a femdom and a femdom, uh, like a woman would humiliate a man and just kind of do the same thing like a submissive is. I've never been part of that. That's not my thing. Cuckolds are definitely another archetype. Um, there's also the archetype of public humiliation. Um, I've never been that type of archetype. I'm pretty much more core uh, dominant submissive. So again, um, I will be releasing a book. I'm currently working on an ebook. It's um, a very short ebook. Kind of gives you the core concept. If you want to introduce soft core BDSM to save your relationship, if you're having trouble in the bedroom, having trouble with your marriage, um, you need to understand the archetype. So that's exactly why I said that. So please stay tuned. Um, I will de I will be developing an email list later. So at least that way you'll be able to uh, keep track whenever I upload stuff and whatnot. So again. All the stuff that I'm doing, that I know, my knowledge, I'm generating back to you. So, let's get into the core concept of Dirty Talk. I know it's a lot, so thank you for bearing with me. When it comes to dirty talk, and I think it's very important that that if you have a dom, as if you're a dominant and you have a submissive, you need to understand that the BDSM lifestyle is continuous. It, it builds congruency with your character and your archetype, meaning that if you're going to adopt this type of lifestyle, you have to be congruent with your actions, your mentality, your spirituality. Um, every, in every aspect of your life, you have to be very congruent. And it's important to know, and I was talking about safe words uh, just a few minutes ago, is if we look at the original book from Fifty Shades of Grey, when Christian pretty much spanked Anna or whipped Anna six times, Anna, and you and you won't know this unless you actually read the books, 
Anna had her right to actually exercise her safe word. She could have said yellow. She could have said red. But she never did because she believed, and in my opinion, if you look back at the books and the core concepts, is she thought that BDSM was only in the bedroom. No, BDSM is a lifestyle. It's a choice. It's just like a fitness lifestyle, right? Like it is a choice that it is very continuous. It's congruent with your character. It's congruent with your lifestyle in the bedroom, outside of the bedroom. Like if you choose to be X, Y, Z, you have, it's going to be continuous. You don't get to like click. It's not a light switch. You don't be, you don't get to click on and off. So first you need to understand that with dirty talk, you need to be able to escalate a situation now you'll find a lot of dating coaches um one of my favorite dating coaches uh not to say that he's my dating coach but one of the guys i, I genuinely like to follow it's, there are two of them it's a uh, trip kramer and uh, todd v those guys i really like what they um I really like what they have. Uh, it's not the bullshit like, you know, the cheesy pickup lines or pickup artists or anything like that. I BDSM, I'm very singular. I'm very particular in my lifestyle. I'm looking for a specific type of woman. Um, and I know I've talked about in the past, you know, high body count, low body count. I talked about that I took away a, a woman's virginity. I've also talked about I've been with the total 304. Um, I found... I've even been with women who've been married, divorced, more money than me, less money than me. I found that you need to find a right medium, in my opinion. If you want a submissive, you need to find a woman who, in her mind, she thinks she's sexually experienced, but she's actually sexually deprived. Um, you also need a woman who, and really, money doesn't have no reflection on my lifestyle. It really doesn't. But I've always given reward to uh, women who choose to be my submissives, um, I genuinely believe that you need to find a woman who, in her mind, she thinks she's sexually experienced, but she's sexually deprived to the point where she's like, I'm willing to try this to please another man, but you also, as a man, need to be with your head on straight. And I've I've learned recently, um, there was a uh, acquaintance that I was talking to who told me that... Uh, their roommate was a bum just living on the couch he was my i'm 26 i'm about to be 27 in july pretty much a bum no job nothing going for him and uh, this particular acquaintance has their bachelor's master's degree great career all that stuff but their roommate is pretty much a piece of shit it's a fucking bum. If you're a bum, if you're a man listening to this and you think, oh, I can I can adopt the Fifty Shades lifestyle, I can adopt the BDSM lifestyle, you're fucking lying to yourself. You need to do something. You don't have to necessarily go to school, go to college, get a degree. You can get a certification, whatever. Do something. Do something productive. And you need to be able to have uh, your daytime job, your hobby, and that's good. and then your a core group of people that are going to support you and then you can find your partner cuz that's that's the ideal point right if you're out gambling doing stupid shit recreational drugs like coke and heroin and vicodin and abusing all that shit it, it's funny uh, just you need to get your shit together you can't adopt this type of lifestyle and not have your shit together to some degree right it doesn't have to be perfect but you at least have to have your shit together so now that we know the core concepts of BDSM is that a, a woman, your submissive, can call her safe words at any time if she doesn't like it. And you can't get offended to that as a dominant. You have to respect that. that that's why boundaries are put in place. As we are now entering the type of dirty talk, it's the art of anticipation of an action. If I'm out with a partner, if I'm out with some some girl that I met, I need to tease her mind. And I was talking about dating coaches coaches a little bit earlier. Dating coaches, true dating coaches, true dating coaches that they teach you, you know, premise, preface, escalation. Um, they don't actually talk about sex itself. I'm not much of a dating coach. I'm more of a sex advice coach. I want to make that very clear. Um, because dating coaches are much better at like texting and talking to me. I'm much more direct. Like I have an agenda. Like I don't fuck around with anybody uh, when it comes to this type of lifestyle. I try to make it very clear. 
But dating coaches is they're implementing an idea or a thought in the same way that like those, uh, I would say scam artists or uh, cold callers, they're implementing this idea, right? Let me put this in a more business aspect. If someone calls you and says, hey, I can help you make six figures in a year, you'll be able to be uh, living on the beach, uh, drinking margaritas, working from your laptop for two two hours a day, and that's all you have to do, and just money coming in. I just Im- implemented an idea in your mind on the business aspect. So now we're gonna take this into the sexual aspect. With my partners, I need to implement the idea, the concept, the imagery of what she can anticipate when I bring her into the bedroom. Now, take note, I said, when I bring a woman into the bedroom, I do, not when she says, when are the gatekeepers to sex? We know this. I'm not going to force myself on there. I'm, I'm, I, I don't like being pushy or anything like that. I refuse to be with women who are reluctant to have sex with me. I only have sex with women who they want or desire to. No, let me change that. They desire to have sex with me because then the sex is boring. It's like, you know. So I'm implementing an idea into this woman. I'm either directing it or I'm narrating it. But at the end end of the day, there's imagery, metaphors, similes, core concepts of English. So I want to take in some role play here as if like I took a woman out to dinner, right? Listen to this. Hey, Kylie, what would you like to eat tonight? She says, I don't know. And there's a pause. And I say, I know what I would like to eat tonight. She's like, what? You. I just implemented in Kylie's mind. And Kylie's just, you know, the metaphorical girl. I don't know what it is about Kylie. There's something about every time I think about Kylie, it's like not I not Kylie hurt her, but Kylie, the name is just so generic in my opinion. Uh, with Kylie, uh, I just implemented an idea to Kylie's mind like, hey, Kylie. What do you want to eat tonight? She says, I don't know. I respond, I know what I want to eat tonight. She says, what? And I say, you. And I look at her dead in the eyes. I don't break eye contact. Now she is thinking about me eating her out. That's arousal. That's anticipation of an accent. That's imagery. And... Now that you understand that I just narrated something, I didn't direct it, I narrated, I talked about something, talk about something in reaction. Let's talk about directing. Now, if you're on a date, you could do this with a woman on a date that you had just met the first time, but I, I want to make sure that I'm not overstepping your dating boundaries because my this podcast goal isn't for you to actually date. It's because you've already been with your partner. You've already broken the sexual boundary. Uh, it could be a girlfriend of a long time. Um, it could be a um, fuck buddy who's wanting to explore her limits my podcast is designed for people who've already spoke the physical sexual boundary it's not for people who are in the dating realm i want to make that very clear i'm not a dating coach um but when it comes to to touching a woman right um if you're just trying to find an arousal you are well within your right as a man to direct a woman to touch you or to not touch you so for me, if I'm walking down the street, um, or let's say we left the bar and we're going to the other bar, or we're going to another venue, I will tell her, hold my hand. And she will hold my hand. Um, or let's say we're walking side by side, and I tell her, put your arm around my, my hip. And I put my arm around her shoulder. So she knows that's how we're walking together. I am telling her what to do. I'm not asking what to do. I am telling her what to do. And women want dominance. Women, some women will try to tease you or be very bratty. A, a brat is actually a type of archetype. So I'll talk about that in a, in a later podcast. You know, they act up because they want to be uh, sexually punished or aroused in a type of way from their their dominant. There are women who do uh, do that, but as a man, you need to direct your woman. You need to tell her what you want as a man. 
no questions asked because that is true submission a woman's submission is she's not questioning your dominance the only time she questions it if you're pushing her boundaries and that's perfectly fine but i will say this if uh, um and i talked about it the last video that got me canceled if one of my women is if we're at a mixer or if i'm at a gathering with with my woman and you know friends family friends of friends and she starts acting up and i tell her chill the fuck out and she acts up even more I assure you, I will not be in a relationship more with that woman. You do not embarrass me. The same way, like, I could embarrass you. Like, I believe you need to have that mutual respect. And, of course, the last thing you want to do is embarrass somebody or whatever the fuck it is. But it's very clear that I can embarrass myself. Every guy in the room, every woman in the room is be like, he's just being a guy. If a woman acts up and she embarrasses me, and she embarrasses herself. They're like, fuck, that is a like that is a very low value woman. And I know women, if, if any woman who's listening to that, I know you don't want to hear it, but I assure you that that is exactly what women are thinking. That's exactly worth it. A man can do stupid shit because a man is gonna learn the truth the hard way. If a woman does that, they're gonna be she, she's a three or four, she's a drunk, she's an alcoholic. No, like I know it's a double standard, I know it's a double edged sword, but it's just it's the right thing. Like in all my submissives that I ever had, they've never acted up. Um, they knew when I gave them that look, chill the fuck out. Because um, if not, and I, as we go into that, they're gonna they're gonna feel it later in the bedroom. So we talked about narrating. As we enter the bedroom scene. I want to pay respect because I actually uh, – this podcast came from a bit of inspiration from um, uh, award-winning uh, adult film star Sterling Cooper. I think he's an Australian. Uh, he looks like a, another version of Johnny Sins. So Johnny Sins – everybody knows who Johnny Sins is. Um, but Sterling Cooper is um, – uh, another coach uh, that I came across his Facebook reel, and I was, he's you know friends with the Tates, friends with Myron Gaines, uh, Fresh, um, all those guys, <coughs> and um, uh, he's a you know ex male escort and award winning uh, adult uh, film star, and this kind of generated to me and uh i haven't seen much of the bdsm aspect from him he probably has stuff but i probably haven't uh, came across it yet but it did inspire me to create this because he had one really good um clip that i saw on tiktok and i uh, this is where we're diving into that he said that if you want to learn how to dirty talk you gotta read an erotic romance novel now some people don't like reading get the audiobook some people like reading. At the end of the day, if you pick up any one of the Fifty Shades of Grey books, you're going to learn how to dirty talk. So just if you're going to do the audiobook, do the audiobook. If you're going to do the the, uh, the actual book, do it. But read any erotic romance novel because... If we talk about Dirty Talk itself, and I know I've just been kind of prolonging it, but there's a lot of tangents that all circle back into Dirty Talk itself. You need to be able to not do the typical, you know, if a woman says, you know, talk to me dirty and you're like, oh, you like that? Oh, you, you want this dick? Oh, yeah, suck that dick or anything like that. No, 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 no. It, it's funny because it reminds me of the, the movie, uh, I think it was uh, Trainwrecked with uh, Amy Schumar. And she's having the sex scene with John Cena. That's like to be able to dirty talk. You need to be able and again, implement the image. So. We're talking about in the last episode, setting the tone, put on the candles, put on that. But the last sex that you ever want is just like no moaning, no groaning, no sound sex, right? And I personally like to use soft music or like a sexual playlist uh, just to make sure that if there is that awkward thing, it just doesn't seem that because the tone is set. It's kind of like if you look at any 
Skinamax, Cinemax movie, there's always that soft core music in the end behind the moans and groans. Like, just put it in that way. Because if not, you're just watching a, like a hardcore porn video and it's literally just moaning and groaning. So that's personally why I do it. But I'm going to give you six things. A uh, couple of them I did steal from Sterling Cooper. So again, I'm not trying to like copyright or anything like that um, because he had really good core concepts that I absolutely uh, loved. Like I, I'm, I'd implement in my sex life. So these are the three that I would use. So before the bedroom, let's say you're out at dinner. This particular one is... Let's say I come out of the car, I'm about to pick up my, my girl from her house or her apartment. She comes in, I'm like, hey you, you know, kiss her, whatever, missed you. And I tell her, in her ear, I'll whisper this into a woman's ear, I'm like, let's make sure we're on good behavior tonight. I wouldn't want to spank you afterwards. I just implemented that image, that if she misbehaves when I take her home and we do the dirty... She's going to get spanked or she may not get spanked or maybe she would want to get spanked or maybe she may act up a little bit just so she can get spanked. But I told, I pretty much gave her an option. If you act up, I will spank you. If you don't act up, I won't spank you. So maybe she'll act up so I can spank her because she actually wants to be spanked. Then that's kind of like the brat archetype. This is actually another technique that I, I, uh, I actually like and um, it's the pull away. Let's say the first date, right? <clears throat> Link up with a girl. Um, and it's always awkward, right? Uh, after the first date, you're trying to touch her, but you're not trying to be too, you know, grab assy or anything like that. You're not trying to uh, invade her personal space. And I know dating coaches are like, you know, touch her on the shoulder, touch her on the midst of her back. Don't try to touch her low on her hips or her ass. Um because you know you're just gonna turn her off right it's the first date it, and you won't know until like you have to be able to play off a woman's uh, aura and and i know i'm not the dating coach to talk about this but i'll tell you this is that every time that i'm out with a woman for the first date i am touching her in some way and i think a really good way to break the barrier is whenever I, whenever i shake a hand if I shake a girl's hand for the first time and it's a girl that I would like to court, it's a girl that I would like to seduce, it's a girl that I would like to have sex with, I always turn my palm up so her hand's here. She shakes my hand and I say two kisses, kiss her on the cheek, whatever. I don't question the idea of, you know, you know, hi, whatever, hug. No, I will do the soft hug, have her pull my hand in and I'll kiss her two in the cheeks. I already broke the physical barrier. I already uh, broke the awkwardness that could happen. So if I kiss her on the cheek, she's not going to freak out. So let's say, uh, you know, we're having drinks, having a good time, maybe playing a game. We're at like Dave and Buster's or some arcade or doing something, maybe uh, playing cornhole or something like that. And we're against each other. She beats me and I'm like, all right, high five, kiss on the cheek, right? I already broke that barrier. She's not going to freak out on the kiss of the cheek because she's like, oh, this is that guy that he's going to, you know, be a little bit physical, but he's not going to be too physical, right? That's the way to play it, in my opinion, of course. So let's say on the first date, you met this woman, you broke the physical barriers, you know, you're talking, whatever, and it comes to the conclusion of the night. And it's always, always a cinematic rom-com, always a romance drama movie. Guy escorts her to the door. And he says, well, it would be nice to see you again or whatever he says. And there's always that awkward moment when you're about to kiss her, right? Me, I'm a just go for it. Worst thing she could do is pull away. If she pulls away, that is not the girl for you. There's a difference between her putting out and there's a difference between her removing that physical barrier wall to actually kiss you because if she kiss you that means she's like she likes you right um when you go in for the kiss she kisses you and as you're kissing her right maybe pull a little bit of her hair maybe uh you know stroke her earlobe a little bit um maybe kind of um, as you're kissing her you're pulling her hair but you have her and kind of like a choking thing you have your uh, hand 
over her neck, but you're not squeezing on her trachea. You're kind of squeezing her carotid a little bit, right? You pull her hair. And then as you're pulling away and you're letting go, she starts trying to chase you, chase that kiss that you just gave her. That is a really good technique. So while you're doing that, what you want... <laughs> oh man, I love this, dude. Um, as you're doing all of this, what you want to tell her, easy tiger, I don't want you to be undressing me tonight. So you have her by the neck, you're pulling your hair, you're kissing her, and then as you let go of that grip, you kind of, I, I like to push her head towards my lips, but I also like to pull back. So it's kind of like this false perception of her chasing me, but and more, more, they'll always want to chase it. If they, if they like you that much, if they're sexually attracted to you, they're always going to want to chase, even though you pull their head in and you'll say, easy tiger, I don't want you to undress in me tonight. I literally implemented the idea already breaking the physical barrier, building the sexual attraction, building the sexual attraction, that now she's thinking about how I look undressed. That is another thing you could do before the bedroom. And so now that we, uh, we, now that we address that, here's another one that I, I thought of. I'm 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 laughing here because I I some look sometimes I don't even know what I say. I like to some people would say I talk out of my ass, but it's just the natural charisma that like I think of it. Like I'm I'm looking at this cuz I wrote this on the spot and I'm just thinking like where the fuck it's like little Wayne. Like he doesn't write down his lyrics. He just says whatever the, he gets high and just fucking records like I don't I don't remember. I don't remember writing this, uh, which is a good thing that I write this. So, another thing that you could say is, let's say you're out with a girl, you're having drinks, whatever, and uh, maybe she's acting up, maybe she's being a little bit flirty, and you implement the idea, right? You haven't crossed. You maybe or may have not crossed, but if I whisper into a woman's ear, I'm like, what would people think? I'm like, no, not what people think. You tell her, right, because she's like, oh, you're being a bad boy, whatever. You're talking shit, right? You know, and I've always said this. You could talk shit to a woman. You could crack a joke with him. I mean, there's a difference between teasing her and being disrespectful. But let's say you're teasing her and I'm like, look, I promise to be a perfect gentleman tonight. <laughs> I promise to be a perfect gentleman tonight as long as you don't ho hog all the covers. And so essentially what I've implemented when I say this, I promise to be a gentleman tonight as long as you don't hug all the covers, is I told her, I'm like, I will court you, I will make you feel good, all this stuff. But I implemented the idea, like at the end of the night, if she hogs all the covers, right, if she's the type of woman, like let's say you've already slept with her, you had sex, she hogs all the covers, um, maybe she doesn't want you to be a gentleman. Maybe she, wants to, maybe she wants to be a bad boy. You don't know. But again, I've implemented these types of scenarios in her head. And this is something that you could do before the bedroom, on a date, that type of stuff. Um, I'm literally thinking about this. I don't know where the hell that I um, – I don't know where the hell I came up with this. But so I can talk about like the three other things that are um, you know, OG code, always will work. There's no doubt about it. Again, credit to Sterling Cooper because the first three I came up with, the other three, credit to him or whoever he got it from. So another thing that you could do, you could do this before the bedroom, uh, before you actually go into the apartment, you go actually into her house or her zone or she comes into your zone. Maybe you're just, again, at a public venue. What you could say is, what would people think if they found out what a naughty girl you've been tonight? That's something that you can implement very well before the bedroom. The other thing that you could put is, you know, if you keep misbehaving, I'm going to have to remind you who's in charge tonight. So let's say you first meet her on the date and everything's going fine. You're cracking jokes, something. Let's say she does something that you don't like. Now, it could be anything, right? It could be anything. She stepped over the top or maybe she's just kind of teasing a little bit. Maybe she did something that 
it's kind of an ick, but not too much of an ick that you would walk away. I know some guys would be like, you need to be one foot door, one out of the other. Hey, look, if that's your lifestyle, go for it. But if you want to learn the teasing aspect of it, you have to think like one foot out of the door, whatever. But if you still want to be able to remind her who, you know, who's in charge, you would say, you know, if you keep misbehaving, we're going to have to remind you who's in charge tonight. Or you could tell her, I'm going to have to remind you who's in charge tonight. It just depends on the woman because depending on the woman that you're with, they may be super alpha or super, you know, you know, feminist, you know, woke, all that shit. At the end of the day, a woman's a woman and a woman's still going to submit to men. A woman, and I'll tell you this, very masculine women who have kids or women who are very masculine in them themselves, at some point they submitted to a man. And it was that man that they gave up their masculinity and took the feminine role to be a woman. So I know I'm talking shit. This is not to be misogynistic, but it's absolutely true. Any woman, and I'll say like single woman, 33, two kids, married, divorced, whatever. Uh, maybe she's the only working parent. Um, you know, she's had a few partners, whatever. At some point, the guy that she gave it up to, she removed her masculinity and then she became a feminine woman like that. So again, at the end of the day, any woman wants to be dominated. Any woman who says otherwise, they're full of shit. Um, so that's another one that you can use. Who's in charge tonight or I'm in charge tonight. And the last one, this is extreme. But if you have that solid sexual attraction and you know y'all are going to be fucking, what you could tell her is... Your pussy is mine tonight. And you could use this in or out of the bedroom. You tell her or you whisper in her ear or you can grab her by the neck. You kiss her, go away, pull her hair, maybe grab her by the throat. Not choke, but just grab her by the throat. And she and you tell her, you look her dead in the eye and you say, your pussy is mine tonight. You say that with absolute conviction. You don't laugh. You let her know. She's like, yes. She's going to say yes, daddy exactly what she's gonna fucking say it, it, it does not fucking fail now you could use this in the bedroom too of course but again we're talking about before the bedroom so we talked about before the bedroom that's dirty talk right we know it's narrating and directing we're trying to implement something into our mind trying to give her this anticipation we know that the foreplay is already involved but what do you do in the actual – what do we do during the action, during sex in of itself? If you're not good at dirty talk, this is exactly why I'm creating this podcast for you. When things are hot and heavy and how this kind of correlates to B – or how it correlates to BDSM. If I bring a girl home and I say, go to the room. And I'm like, I want you to take off all your clothes, just wear your bra, wear your underwear, sit on the chair, sit at the edge of the bed, keep your hands up. So like if, if these are my uh, if I'm on my hips, uh, I'm like, keep your hands up. I want you here waiting for me. She does not move at all. I am telling her exactly what she's going to do. I am directing her what to do. The same way that you look at the original uh, Fifty Shades of Grey movie where he's pretty much introducing her like – he takes off her clothes. She's in her, she has no bra on, but she has her uh, underwear. He's directing her what she needs to do. So he tells her, look away from me, kneel. She's looking in the corner. Her hands are up. He says, bring your palm up. He gets uh, the whipping cane, gets the whipping cane, teases her a little bit, and then he hits her. I know that sounds tough, but the, I assure you, the fabric that I picked, like it, it really doesn't hurt. Um, hits her. And she was like, <gasps> and I was like, did that hurt? She says, no. I'm like, okay, just tell me your limits, right? You direct a woman what you want to do. So you come home. Uh, let's say you're on a date with your partner, with your wife, whatever. You're like, I want you to go home, clean up, take a shower if you have to. I'm going to get ready. Or you don't even have to tell her you're going to get ready. Go to the room. After you showered, after you put on your sexiest lingerie, I want you to kneel by the bed, kneel by the door, wait for me to come in, all that stuff. She will do that because you're telling her exactly what she needs to do. And that's the whole port 
uh, that's a whole important part of submission. She is submitting to you. She trusts that you will not hurt her. But she's also arousing herself because that's the art of seduction because she can't anticipate. It's like, why is he telling me that? No, it's exactly what you do. So now that we know what directing sounds like, how would we use the belt? So let's say you come into the room and she's kneeling by the door. She's in her sexy lingerie or maybe she's completely naked, right? You tell her, go to the bed, put your hands down on the edge and bend over. That is directing. That is dirty talk. And then I want I want to do a little bit of role, role play so you can understand that you bend over. I'm like, do you know why I'm build, bending you over? Right? That's narrating. She says no. I'm like, you've been a naughty girl this weekend. I didn't like the way you spoke to me on Tuesday. And I know it sounds maybe you're bringing up old shit. I'm like, you don't get to tell me when to leave the toilet seat up or leave it down. Like, and I sh I know she probably may be tripping the fuck out because you're talking some petty shit. No, no, she's going to be very engaged. She says, I'm sorry for telling you to put the toilet seat down, right? She's going to be a good girl. I'm like, good girl. Now you know who daddy is. And then you get out the belt and then you spank her, right? That is anticipation. That is seduction. That I, I know it sounds very wrong, but that is you narrating and directing a situation. You haven't even stimulated her clit yet. You haven't even done anything other than just set in this tone on who the dominant is and who the submissive is. And so when it comes from there, now we know what narrating sounds like and we know what directing sounds like. You can call her a good girl. You can call her a bad girl. Um, and you could also say once in the bedroom, kind of like you're putting on a mask, kind of like you're putting on this role play. If she wants something from you, she has to say, please. And you could, whatever name that you want, you can make her call your sir, daddy, master, Bobby, whatever gets your dick hard. That's fine. Whatever you want her to call you, tell her that's what you're going to have her call you, but you do it with conviction. In the bedroom, in the art of having sex, I think it's really good for you to direct or inform your partner that there are only six things that she can tell you. Faster, deeper, slower, softer, harder. And then she could also say, pull my hair, spank me, and choke me. All those things is part of dirty talk. Because now she's directing you, the dominant, what she wants you to do to her. So let's say you're in missionary. Let's say you're in doggy. Let's say you're in froggy style. You're in the lotus position. You're in the fetal position. You're in the T position. You're in whatever position that gets you off, man. She is directing to you what will please her. But it's not going to jab at your ego. So, you know, if, if you ask her, let's say you're going at it in missionary... And she doesn't say any of those things, right? Or she could even say, bite me, um, which is a little bit extreme, but it's happened before. Or she could say, you know, pinch my nipples or anything like that, right? She, that's direction. It's not jabbing your ego. So like, let's say you're doing missionary position and you told her those six things, faster, deeper, slower, softer, harder, spank me, choke me, pull my hair, scratch me, whatever. You know if you're doing missionary and you're doing it fast and deep, she may be slain. She may be saying something like uh, deeper and slower. That's dirty talk. And then you say, oh, you like that now? I'm like, oh, okay. All right. So now that we know what she can direct you, how do you direct her? The way you or narrow, I think uh, not so much uh, direction. If like direction is changing positions, like you know, like, get on your back, and I'm like, I want you to turn over and suck me off, something like that. That's direction. Narrating is where things get a little bit tricky because everybody could be like directing. Oh, you like that? Oh, you dirty slut, whatever. That's not that's not really work. It's narrating. So I want to put in this scenario. Um, 
I want to put in the scenario. So guys, if you heard that, that was my paper. So that was just kind of my guideline to talk about this thing. If we're talking about narrating and narrating is the imagery during sex. We talked about imagery before sex, but in sex, there's a lot of things that you can tell her that will keep turning her on. So I needed some water whiskey break. Okay. So narration is the 60% of the battle. The 40% was the other stuff that we talked about. The 60% of the battle, the one that makes or breaks you, right? It's the make or break. Narrating, I be believe, is the hardest thing to do when you start dirty doing dirty talk. But once you get really good at it in the bedroom, in the moment, you're hard, she's wet. Things are hot and steamy. Oh, I assure you, it's gonna, it's gonna pay dividends. So, I'm gonna read about a page and a half from Fifty Shades uh, Darker, um, and this is when, uh, in the second book or the second movie, Anastasia and Christian have sex after making up from you know, him spanking her and they didn't talk for like a week or something like that. So you're going to, if this doesn't get you hard, if you're a woman and you're listening to this and this doesn't get you wet, if you're a man and this doesn't get you hard, there's something wrong with you. So this is where we'll start. Please what Anastasia make love to me. I am. He murmurs gently blowing against me. No, I want you inside me. Are you sure? Please. He doesn't stop his sweet, exquisite torture. I moan loudly. Christian, please. He stands and gazes down at me, and his lips glisten with the evidence of my arousal. So hot. Well, he asked. Well, what? I pant, staring up at him in frantic need. I'm still dressed. I gape at him in confusion. Fusion. Undress him? Yes, I can do this. I reach for his shirt and he steps back. Oh no. He admonishes. Shit. He means his jeans. Oh. And this gives me an idea. My inner goddess cheers loudly to the rafters and I drop to my knees in front of him. Rather clumsily and with shaking fingers, I undo his waistband and fly. Then yank down his jeans and boxers, and he springs free. Pause on the narration. She doesn't say his dick springs free. She says he springs free, as his dick is part of him and his masculinity. So, bear me if you're a woman, listen to this. That's exact. Like that is that is narration. I peek up at him through my lashes, and he's gazing at me, with. What? Trepidation? Awe? Surprise? He steps out of his jeans and pulls off his socks, and I take hold of him in my hand and squeeze tightly, pushing my hand back like he's shown me before. He groans and tenses, and his breath hisses through clenched teeth. Very tentatively, I put him in my mouth and suck hard. Mmm. He tastes good. Ah. Anna, whoa, gently. He cuts my head tenderly and I push him deeper into my mouth, pressing my lips together as tightly as I can, sheathing my teeth and sucking hard. Fuck, he hisses. Oh, that's a good, inspiring, sexy sound, so I do it again, pulling his length deeper, swirling my tongue around the end. Him. I feel like Aphrodite. Anna. That's enough. No more. I do it again. Beg, Gray, beg. And again, Anna, you've made your point. He grunts through gritted teeth. I don't want to come in your mouth. I do it once more and he bends down, grasps me by my shoulders, hauls me to my feet, and tosses me on the bed, dragging his shirt over his head. 
he then reaches down to his discarded jeans and looks like a good boy scout produces a foil packet. He's panting, like me. He take your bra off, he orders. I sit up and do as I to I'm told. Lie down. I want to look at you. Well, I don't know about you, but I got a semi. I pay respect to Sterling Cooper, who said, you know, if you want to get really good at dirty talk, you have to read or audiobook some erotic romance because it's narrating the imagery in your hand. Like, you, this is not a movie. Before this ever became a movie, this was a book. So the words that you're seeing, the words that I tell somebody, whether it's texting, sexting, uh, vocal, of course, I genuinely believe that tone has to do a lot with it. But even then, you could see the tone or you can feel the tone and you're not even watching the movie, right? Like, so when it comes to narrating, the way that I've learned how to narrate sex, because directing is easy, right? But narrating is the creme of the creme. Um... Also, I'm probably a little bit late to this, but mama, if you're listening to this, you know, should have stopped listening after the first 10 minutes. Um, if I'm narrating, so let's, let's say this, I arouse my woman and decide to enter her and I'm teasing her. Let's say I put the, the tip of my dick inside her vagina and I'm just teasing her. I'm not putting in there and I tell her and I'm like, I want you to beg. I want you to beg for me to put it in. If you beg... Just tell me that you want me to put it in. But when I put it in, you call me Poppy. You call me Daddy. You call me Sir. You call me Gray. And she says, put it in me. I'm like, oh, God. You feel so wet. I can feel you so tight around me. That little line right there, like I'm getting chills just fucking saying that, right? Like that is narration in of itself. I am describing what's happening. I am narrating the, I'm directing the anticipation and narrating what is happening. And that in of itself is like, that is how you're going to be able to do this. And I'm like, so uh, another thing that I do and, and uh, 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 let's say, I'm a missionary. I think missionary is, is going to be a lot of, I want to talk about a lot of things, but I think missionary is going to make another sense. Let's say you're doing missionary, whatever. You're looking at her eyes and I'm like, when you're about to come, I want you to kiss me. I'm like, when I feel you tighten around me, I'm like, when I feel you wet, I want you to pull my hair and kiss me and grab me by the throat while I'm stroking deep in and out of you. And you don't stop until you come. You can't moan until you come. You keep kissing me until I'm in and out. And once you orgasm, then you can come and let go. Like that is narrate. I am narrating to her. That is dirty talk. So it's it's mu it's much different than um, I'm going to use like a random euphoria episode. I think it was... Uh, Jacob's dad or Nate Jacob's dad. I can't remember what the fuck the character is when he's like, you know, fucking all the, like he's like half gay, half, or he's bi, you know, fucking girls and guys. And he's like, oh, you dirty slut. Oh, you fucking bitch. Like, no, like that is more on the extreme end of things, but narrating or directing or directing to narrate what will happen, right? If you're doing missionary and she is wrapped around inside you and, you know, guys, I'm telling you, if she's on the pill, do whatever you want. Pill, implant, you know, new ring. Um, let's say you're going at it in missionary. You're choking her. You're pulling her hair. And you tell her, and I'm like, before you come, you need to wrap your legs around me. You don't let you don't let me let go. I'm letting go inside you. Like that, just that little sentence in there. That is dirty talk. And I'm like, I'm like, you want me? You want to be a, a good little girl? You let me go inside you. That is dirty. I'm narrating an action. I'm making her anticipate this. So like when she does that, she is now putting in this mind like this guy is letting go inside me. So guys, I'm not telling you, if she's not on the pill, don't do that. But of course, I'm trying to make this uh, situation 
comparable to, to how you can use it. So I would advise if, if you're trying to get good at Dirty Talk, just write down, you know, get a scratch sheet of paper, write down situations of, you know, 50 things that you would love to tell her and find a way. Can I use this before the bedroom or in the bedroom? Right. Just I, I think, you know, practice makes perfect. And I think that's kind of like some some pickup artists. I think it was Todd V. Um, yeah, I think it was Todd V dating. He's like, you know, uh, what are some pickup lines or what are some um, filler words that I can use? Uh, so, for instance, I, I think this is going to actually make more sense. I'm, let me I'm still this from Todd V. So, Todd V, if you're listening to this, uh, I'm selling this idea from you. Uh, let's say you're talking to a woman on the first date and you just ran out of things to say and it's just awkward. Most guys who start dating or start game, they will freak out because it's silent. Like they, they're just going to be like saying some stupid shit. The way Todd V did this and I, and he calls it, you know, a canned lined which, you know, it wouldn't work on first pickup, but it, it would work in like there. Uh, let's say I'm talking to this woman, we're eating, we're talking, whatever, and then I run out of things to say. And most guys, when they run out of things to say and there's that awkward silence, they're trying to fill the void. So they will say something like, you know, there's a part of me that likes you and there's another part of me that's not so sure. It's a canned line. That, that's exactly what Todd V says, right? But it works, right? Because then she's like, what do you mean? Now you just sparked in another subject, another topic to the conversation. Um, or here's another one that he says. He says, um, you know, I like you, but another part of me is not so sure. And, you know, it's a canned line. Or he'll say, you know, a part of me likes you, but I don't think you and I will get along trying to fill in that void, right? Just some filler words. So I remember him saying this, you know, filler words. It's the same thing with sex, right? You can use filler words, you know, like, let's say it's just an awkward 30 seconds, whatever. I'm like, you call her like, who's been a naughty little girl? Or like, oh, who's been a girl girl? I'm like, oh, who, wh who's the lucky girl that's getting this dick tonight? Or, um, you know, who loves daddy dick? You know, the shit that you would actually look at a porn video, I would say that most of the stuff that you hear in porn videos, I know it's, I know it looks idealistic, but really most of the stuff that in porn videos, those are filler words. Those, those fill in the void, right? Because they're acting to something. So when I tell you this, I'm trying to tell you that there's a way to narrate and direct how to do dirty talk. So again, I want you to be able to understand the difference. So with that being said, if you haven't already, try to find any erotic romance novel. Um, you know, I'll tell you one, a really good, cheap, easy one, uh, The Billionaire's Desire. That's another really good short. Uh, it's actually a, a compilation of various uh, romance stuff. It's probably, it's not BDSM related. The B, uh, You know, Fifty Shades Darker, Fifty Shades Grey, you know, BDSM to the core. But The Billionaire's Desire is a much softer read on the on the viewer's eyes. Um that one's actually really good in terms of like not the BDSM aspect, but more the romance aspect. That's another really good one. So if you want to get really good at Dirty Talk, go ahead and read um, Go ahead and read some erotic romance novels. I'm uh, always advised read the Fifty Shades of Grey, even though some people would say, you know, that's not the best. Um, I mean, you could also uh, read After. Um, that's pretty much where a girl goes to college and she meets this bad boy archetype. Um, and she gives it up to him, even though she had a boyfriend in high school. Another one that you can read is Thoughtless, which is um, a woman and her boyfriend move into the boyfriend's best friend's house. Uh, but boyfriend is an engineer and he's always, you know, running around doing work, trying to support, uh, I think it was Kira. Um, and then the guy's Keelan, I can't remember. But then, you know, Kira finally gives it up to Keelan. Um, who's some local bad boy, rock star, romancer. So at the end of the day, so if you want to get good at Dirty Talk, make sure you pick up some some romance novels, right? I would suggest, you know, anything that's New York Times bestsellers or, you know, the one that I said, Billionaire's Desire. It's a really good self-published book. Um, go ahead and try that. 
Uh, but nevertheless, if you liked this type of podcast and you want me to make more episodes just as explicit at this, leave a comment, subscribe, follow. Make sure you follow me on Rumble because I'll probably get canceled on YouTube and TikTok again. Um, cause, and also, none of the monetization on YouTube is really supporting me because they're just pretty much canceling me all the fucking time. They're saying I'm against community guidelines, copyright, all that shit. Rumble's not doing that. So future is Rumble. Follow me on there. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can DM me, Instagram me, whatever you want. I am there where you need help. So if you're having problems in your relationship, girlfriend, fiance, marriage, let me help you get your spark back. Let me help you get your dominance back. That's exactly why I'm here. I'm teaching you how to how to be a dominant, right? In the most soft core way that's going to make your woman submit to them so you're stopped dealing with the fucking nagging outside of the bedroom. Nevertheless, exercise with caution, exercise with care, have fun, stay tuned, take care.